Let's pray before we begin. Lord please let us understand your word and put it in our hearts. May it shape our lives to be more like your son. In Jesus name we ask, Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Who hath been his counselor? Who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again, for of him, and through him, and to him, are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Well, greetings in the name that's above every name. Fifty-seven years ago, today, June the 28th, 1914, God permitted me to be born the first time into a family that lived out in the country of Navarre County, south of a little town called Dawson, and south of a big town called Dallas, and between two towns called Waco and Corsicana. But we'll be done with that. That first birth didn't amount to anything because it was natural. But oh, that other birth that I got in a little country church not far from where I was born, that second birth, that new birth, that was the transforming birth. And since that time, God has been and has continued to reveal his purpose in me. This is the week of preaching. And I want to spend all of my time preaching. While I was in the islands, some weeks ago, the Lord gave me, I believe, about ten messages. Five for the 30 and five for the 15-minute broadcast that we have to have ready every day. And that's no problem for God if we draw from his will, it never shall run dry. The message and the theme of the week is the cry of the ages. You know what it is? Come down. Come on down. Why be different? Why can't you get along? Why can't you be like the rest of us? Why would you be peculiar? Why don't you join us? Let's cooperate. And uh, let's build a world government and a world church. And uh, let's get into the union. And that's the cry of the ages. You have your Bible, turn to Second Kings, chapter 1, verse 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers, and said unto them, Go, inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel that you go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron. Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. And Elijah departed. When the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are you now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely 
die. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? And they answered him, He was an hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It's Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty with his fifty, and he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of a hill. And he spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king has said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. He answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus saith the king, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. The cry of the ages and of every generation has been, Come down. We find Elijah sitting on the top of a hill. He had already climbed the hill in order to find the preacher. In order to locate him, they had to climb a hill to do it. He might have been through the valley, but he lived on the hill. Every Christian ought to live on earth, but he ought to board in heaven. We're feeding on heaven's wonderful food. God's people, I can say this, after 57 years of living, and 38 of them, have been in the ministry. I feel today that I'm sitting on the rainbow of God's promises with my feet hanging down and praising the Lord for His wonderful goodness. Oh, how precious is the Lord. I woke up this morning about three-something. When I wake up, I usually wake up real good. But I woke up this morning with an old song that we used to sing in our little country church, saying, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on high of ground. And then the second stanza says, I want to live above this old world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled, for faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on high up ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Our Father, we pray, and as we go into this message, that that'll be the desire of our heart. Oh, save us from coming down. Lord, I pray that we'll live hilltop lives, and that we'll live Bible-top lives, mountain-top lives. Save us, Lord from coming down in conviction, in the compromising with the world. Help us, Lord. And, Father, I pray for this week of preaching. Oh, give us a revival. I mean a real Bible revival, an awakening in the hearts and homes and lives of our people. And, Father, we feel that the financial needs, though great and tremendous for a million dollars to build buildings and to carry on what you started long ago, just as is secondary compared with the need for power from God. And I pray that we may preach with power and with Holy Ghost boldness. And, Lord, give us victory to live above this whole world. Though Satan's darts are surely going to be hurled. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come down and 
Elijah refused to come. He said, what we need is for the fire to come down. And I feel that the call to come down is to come down from living the faith. Come down from just believing simply in the Lord and the Word of God and plunging according to His wonderful Word. Today we find ourselves into building programs again. But uh, it's all according to faith over in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Moving on to the greatest boys' home we've ever had, one that we've dreamed about and uh, never have gotten around to building, the dormitories. The girls' dormitories have been built and finished. A little home in the valley for some needed little children that need a place, a sweet and wonderful place, and that just like the Lord to do these wonderful things. Now, there's a little word in the Bible that I've been looking up today, and that is according to. Did you know that everything we do ought to be according to the Word of God? If you have your Bible, turn with me, please, to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, the 119th Psalm. Everything ought to be, I say, according to what God said. Chapter 1. Verse 28, My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me, how? According to thy word. Verse 25, My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me, according to thy word. Verse 41, Let thy mercies come also unto me. O Lord, even thy salvation, according to thy word. So there's strengthening, there's quickening, there's mercy. There's salvation. Verse 58, I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. There's favor and there's mercy. Verse 65, thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord. How did you do it? According unto thy word. Verse 76, let I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. How? According to thy word unto thy servant. So we see comfort. We see merciful kindness according to the word. And then Psalm uh, 119, 107, I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. So get me out of my affliction according to thy word. 116th verse, uphold me, how? According unto thy word. Everything God's ever done, he's done according to to his word. Verse 154, plead, plead my cause and deliver me. How? Quicken me according to thy word. Verse 169, give me understanding. Wherefrom? According to thy word. Verse 170, deliver me. How? According to thy word. Everything is according to God's word. And then you remember one day in Matthew chapter 9, in verse 29, He's just performed some sweet and wonderful miracles of mercy. And there was two blind men that came, and they said, Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy. Give us some eyes. Oh, it's so dark where we are. Would you open our eyes? He said, do you believe that I'm able? You notice he didn't say, do you believe that I'm willing? Do you believe that I'm able? They said, yea, Lord. Yes, Lord. We believe that you are. He said, all right. Be it done unto you according to your faith. What a challenge. That's about the way we live. We live the way we believe. We behave the way we believe. Oh, my preacher brethren today, we must believe the Word of God if we intend to behave the Word of God. And then Matthew chapter 16 and verse 27. He tells us that we're going to be rewarded according to our faith and according to our works. And our works are a result of our faith. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. But our works are to be works of faith and labors of love. Romans 2 and verse 6 said, Who will render? to every man according to his deeds. And then you know Romans 8, 28 works according to what? But he said, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, 
to them that are the called according to his what? Purpose. Have you found his purpose? According to his purpose. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 said, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He rose again according to the Scriptures. He was born, he lived, he died, he rose, he came back, he's coming back according to the Scriptures. And then, if you want something real sweet and precious, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Let every man, as every man, hath purpose in his heart, according as every man has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And notice what he said then. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Don't forget there are some things money cannot buy. Money cannot buy love. Money cannot buy health. Money cannot buy friends. Money cannot buy salvation. Did you know that money cannot buy anything that you have to have in order to go to heaven? Not one thing. And he said, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And so he said, you'll have all sufficiency in all things that you might do what? Abound to every good work. I want to be abounding in my works, don't you? Yes. Dear friends, the cry of the ages is come on down now. I mean, just don't dare to be different. I mean, get in line. Be like the rest of us, you see. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to his big bank account, according to the riches of his grace. And then Paul when faced with a group of disciples that were so burdened about Paul's knots and stripes and his afflictions that the devil had brought upon him, he said, Why, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, how? According to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Yes, according to the power. And then Paul said, I have all and abound. I'm full. Having received of the paper that is the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Now then, I got good news for you, Paul said. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know, I've never offered, for instance, I've never told you if you'd send me $10, I'll pray the Lord will give you back 100 That's none of my business. That's God's business. I just say, be faithful and uh, let the Lord reward you according to his loving kindness and tender mercy. David prayed that away. Oh, he said, God, be merciful unto me. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. I just know that God's good. And I know that he never has failed to bless somebody when they do things for others, if they do it in the Spirit of Christ. And I don't operate God's bank account. I'm just living off of it. And I just know this, that I have all and abound, and I'm full, having received of our radio friends the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. I don't want just your money. I want the sweet smell and the sweet spirit that goes with it. I really mean that. I don't want anybody to give to me grudgingly. One of our precious friends 
wrote me the other day, and I've been thinking about it a good deal, and said, Brother Olaf, in very few times in 27 years I've heard this. Maybe you've been mentioning your needs too much on the radio. And I said in love, and they did, and I appreciated it. And it was a caution to me. But sometimes the burdens are so heavy. And then you see what you could be doing. You see, our bills are paid, but that's not the end of it. Oh, when you realize what you have done for so many, and yet there's many more that you've never touched, but you could have if that had been another room and another bed and some more groceries. I mean, it'll drive you, dear friend. I mean, it's like a dad that has maybe 10 or 12 children, and they're all hungry. And I tell you, he can sure ask the banker for some help or somebody for a job. And that's the spirit in which I guess I've done it. I trust that's been right. Because it doesn't seem there's anything that I need personally except God's power and God's blessing and good health. No, today, if we could just get a vision. But notice, in Philippians 4.19, he said, Now, my God, oh, my God, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And then Titus 3.5, Not by works, not by works, are we saved, but according to his mercy, according to his mercy, hath he saved us and washed us, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, no, sir, but according to his mercy. Oh, that's some according in it. That's God's accounting system. And then Peter said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath begotten us again, according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again into a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance, bought an inheritance. What kind is it, Brother Peter? Oh, he said it's incorruptible. It's what? It's undefiled. What? It fades not away. What about it? It's reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaven as through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Oh, may the Lord bless this message. Second Corinthians chapter 8. And we close talking about the sincerity of your love. We're living in a time of insincerity. Fakes and falsehoods. Synthetics and plastics. And things that are not real. And Paul said to the Corinthians in chapter 8, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God. We've been a witness of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded under the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto all and us by the will of God. Oh, listen. Then he said, Therefore, as you abound in everything in faith, utterance, knowledge, diligence, and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, 
who've begun before not only to do, but also to be far the year to go now, perform the doing of it. That is, there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing man, it's accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to the hath not. Verse 24, and I'm through with the message. Wherefore, show ye to them, and before the church is the proof of your love, and of our boasting on your behalf. The greatest friends on earth follow the family altar program and the enterprises and homes. I said the greatest people on earth. I've said that a thousand times publicly and on the radio. Now then, let God's people this week, this is our final week of an anniversary. And as I said 57 years ago today, I had my first birth in Navarre County. And uh, years after that, of course, I had my second birth, which changed my life and set me in the right direction. And if I've been a blessing to you, I'm asking you this week to share again. I'll give a report as just quickly as I can next week or the week after, according to what has been sent in to build. We're now in building programs again. A lady wrote me and said, I'm crushed because of your answer. I have a little 13-year-old girl that's mentally retarded. And the people said you'd take her. And uh, we've been paying $350 a month for one solid year. And we had to mortgage our home to do it. And we won't be able to do it anymore. Dear friend, Christians ought to take care of little children like that. And that's one of my burdens. And others that I'll not share with you, but you send in this week the final love gift toward the million. I'll give you a report. I've asked God for it. Praise you've never prayed before. Write us at Box 1177, Corpus Christi, Texas. And let's make this the week of prayer. More than any other week, we're going to be praying with our people in the office, and all of our homes will be praying and fasting and trusting God for the finishing up and the completing of a million dollars for the Master to build homes for the miserable and those that have missed the way. I'm confident this song is still true today. Be not dismayed, whatever be time. Amen. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. I hope you'll not miss the rest of the messages this week. Call somebody and ask them to tune in. But remember, don't come down. Stay up where God can use you. Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about Jesus and what the gospel means to you, then hit the video shown on the left of the screen and please don't forget to subscribe. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless your day.